Welcome, everybody, and thanks for joining us on Making Mizzou this week, brought to you by 360 Vodka. Uh, I'm your host, Martin Rucker, and my co-host, Tommy Saunders. And today, we got with us former Mizzou great, always Mizzou great, Jeremy, the pride of St. Louis, Matt. Okay. Okay. Oh, okay. Big dog, let's go. Yeah. Yeah. I appreciate y'all boys having me, man. Yeah. Sure, sure. Yeah. Thanks for coming so, on, man. Yeah, man. Thanks for coming on. So before the show, we looked up your career earnings, you know, 50 million bucks. <laughs> Hey, if I had fifty million, I would not be doing this podcast. I don't know what I'd be doing. <laughs> Why go back and coach high school football? You could do anything, travel, do whatever you want. You know, why go back and pour into these kids? Uh, you know, I think this is what I was supposed to do. Um, you know, it is, um, you know, a blessing and an honor to be able to not only coach high school football but do it. You know, where I went to school, um, getting you know, being able to coach a lot of kids that grew up in the same neighborhood that I grew up in. Um, you know, I've always said you're not reaching your maximum potential as a person until you're helping others, right? Giving back to others. Um, you know, and, and my big thing is, you know, what better way to do that than through the game of, you know, through the, through the game that I love, football. Um, you know, football, there's so many valuable lessons, so many life lessons that are inside of football. Um, you know, it's an ultimate team game. Um, you know, and, and, and I got to come home to do it, man. So, you know, I'm blessed and I'm happy. And, um, you know, when we won that game Friday night, I don't know if I've been, you know, that happy since draft day, you know. And, 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 and it wasn't because I was happy for me. I was happy that, you know, all the work that we put in through the offseason, through the summer, through the spring, um, you know, fall ball, um, and to see the smiles on those kids' faces, man, every every little bit of time is worth it. So, I man. That's what I'm supposed to do. So, man, that's awesome. And I you know, I know, I don't know if you were there, Rock. I'm sure you were at some of the uh, J Mac gives back events. I mean, those were those were, you know, great events to go and be a part and to see you still doing the same thing in a different capacity after, you know, um, being in the NFL is just incredible. And it talks a lot about of what I've always known about you. Of, you know, doing what you want to do and not being influenced by outside negatively influenced by outside factors you know talk about how you're integrating that and teaching your kids that uh where to really listen to coaching and keep it, the head on their shoulders for lack of a better term yeah you know you know the big thing is um you know social media and and, and social media right now um you know that's where I, that's where i get a lot of my information from right in today's world but you know sometimes social media can have a negative um what's the word I'm looking for? A negative outlook, a negative, um, you know, image that goes along with certain things. And um, the one thing I tell my kids is that social media doesn't determine whether or not you're going to be successful. Social, how many followers you've got, how many likes you get on the picture doesn't determine how successful you're going to be in life. Um, and, and that's, and that's what, um, you know, the message I try to get across to them um, you know, I, you guys know the saying, be where your feet are. And, 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 you know, I just want the kids to live in the moment, be present in the moment. And the goal each and every day is to become better than you were yesterday, right? That's on the football field. That's in the classroom. That's at home, right? That's anything that you, any obligation that you have to do. The goal is to be better today than you were yesterday. And, and as long as those kids keep that, um, kind of at the forefront of their minds and understand that, you know, social media doesn't dictate who I'm going to be um, and how successful I'm going to be in life. Um, you know, they're already in a good spot. So um, that's the main reason why I took this job, not only to help these kids on the football field, but it's to prepare them for life, prepare them for life after high school and, and ultimately help them mature, grow and achieve the things that they want to achieve. That's probably like really, really um, heavy hitter coming from you, you know, when you're talking about social media and how, that has no bearing on the success of your life. You know, coming from uh, a former professional football player and somebody who has a huge following on social media, just like, yeah, that's great, but it doesn't matter. There's there's a lot more to life than really? social media and even sports. And that was one thing that Coach Pinkle and his staff really did a good job with us is preparing us for life after sport, life outside of sport. How are you taking some of those messages or what messages are you taking that you've learned over the years from Coach Pinkle, Coach Reed? Um, and what are you trying to instill through your program into these kids about 
life out off the field. Yeah. You know, first and foremost, just big shout out to all the coaches I've had in my career. Um, you know, Pinkle Reed, um, even some guys who, you know, Doug Peterson, Matt Nagy, yeah. Hugh Staley, right? The list, David Culler, who's now a head coach down in Houston, right? Mm-hmm. The list goes on and on. So I've had a, you know, a really, really good, you know, set of coaches that have taught me so much that I try to instill in my kids as well, you know, to a much lesser degree, uh, but still some of the same principles, right? Um, you know, T, the big thing, man, is just um, getting the kids to get out and see the real world. Yeah. Um, and, and, and whether it's through community service, whether it's through uh, different trips, um, you know, whether it's me sitting down with them and going over um, applications, whatever the case may be, just getting the kids to understand kind of how life works. Um, yeah. And do I have all the answers? No, I don't have all the answers, but I have been a guy who, for all my life, if I didn't know the answer, I'm gonna do whatever I can to find out the answer. And, um, you know, just with, with any time they have any questions about anything, just, you know, resources and get them to the right people to sit them down and explain certain situations. Um, and, and and just constantly tell the kids that, you know, there, there's the bigger picture here is just making sure that you go into college with all the tools that you need to be successful. Um, whether that, is through football or whether that's through academics or whether that's, you know, you decide to go to the military, whatever you decide to do when you leave high school, it's just, I'm trying to equip you with all the tools to be successful. And I think that's the one thing that Coach Pinkle always taught us. And I mean, hell, you got, you know, different study hall, you had different type of seminars you can go to, you had different type of meetings that he would bring people in to talk to us. Right. Uh, the things that I want to do, I want to bring former athletes right. in who, didn't go the sport route, who went different routes and had them come talk to us about, hey, this is what happened. This is kind of how my life, you know, how I transitioned from high school to college and from college to whatever I do now. And these are the paths that I took and, the, you know, the, the obstacles I had to overcome. So all those little things right there are ways that I'm trying to get these kids to understand and, and kind of um, have a better, you know, picture of what it's going to be like when they leave Kirkwood High School. That's awesome. And Tommy, you talked about um, the J-Mac gives back deal. So um, I'd be remiss if I didn't tell this story because J-Mac definitely gives back. He gave to me directly. So he had a charity softball game at uh, Mizzou. And uh, that weekend is when I met my wife. And so (laughs) J-Mac, I appreciate that. I take credit for that. (laughs) Appreciate that. And it's so funny, all three of us are on here because the first person that I said uh, we walked in the door and Tommy Saunders was standing next to me and I went, bro, I think I just found my wife. It's literally what I said, J-Max event. So this right here, uh, this is a special little group for me. <laughs> <laughs> um, kind of transition. And now what's it like, or what was the transition like going from playing pro ball and being the guy now back to high school and preparing guys? And preparing them at such a young age, right? Like this isn't even college. Like you skipped a step and went all the way back, basically to the basics. Like, what's that been like, and uh, how's it gone? You know, the the one, you no know, one of the main reasons why I decided to, because I had a couple chances to do some stuff in the pros, a couple chances to do mm-hmm. some stuff in college, and and some broadcasting opportunities. Uh, you know, one of the reasons why I decided to come back to high school is one, the location, right? This this is where I grew up, right? This is home. Sure. Um, you know, two. I got two beautiful young young girls, uh, young daughters that that I'm that I'm trying to be present as much as possible. Yeah. Um, you know, so those were two big factors of why I decided to come home. Um, but T, to be honest with you, when I got done playing, um, it was tough for me because I felt like I didn't go out on my own terms. Right. I'm um, kind of forced out because I couldn't get healthy. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and I, I still have to have surgery. I just haven't got around to it yet. Really? Uh, so for me, it was tough, um, you know, and luckily for me, I had a beautiful wife who held me down and, um, you know, was there for me and kind of, you know, kind of helped me maneuver through these things. And, you know, I'm always forever grateful and th- thankful for her because, um, you know, she allowed me to basically come back home and be a part of this. Right. Um, you know, she's from the Northeast. I was in the Northeast and um, her family's up there and she was, you know, so selfless that, you know, she Hey, babe, whatever you whatever you want to do to make you happy right now. And 
Uh, I tell this story to, you know, everybody who, you know, who's been here that, you know, for a while I was lost, man, you know, yeah. depressed and didn't really know what I wanted to do. And immediately when I got back to St. Louis, got back to Kirkwood, I kind of perked up, right? Perked up a little bit. Um, and then when I started coaching, right, the smiles came back, uh, <laughs> the fun came back, all that stuff that was what I was known for, you know, growing up, all that stuff came back. And, and that's how I knew that I made the right decision uh, to come home and coach coach football. That's awesome, man. Yeah, man. Uh, I think it's interesting because whenever uh, I talk to people and there's certain words that they say, there's certain, you know, talk tracks that they talk about to know if where they're at mentally, right, where they're at in their life. And when you talk about presence and you talk about being there and being in the moment and you talk about your daughter and you're talking about your wife and how you got there, like, that is every indication that you're on the right path. You're, you're truly doing what you're supposed to do. You understand that right now is most important and you're not trying to build. It's not, we're not building for the future. You know, by doing what we're doing today is the future is being built today. Yep. You know, and so what do you notice in your in your team, in these kids to know that or what do you start seeing to know that they're ready, whether that's ready for the game, whether that's hey, they got what it takes to make the right – I can trust that they're going to make the right decisions whenever they go to the next level. You know, the big thing I tell these kids is I say, hey, this is your football team, right? This is your football team. I'm here to give you a sense of direction, but you guys are going to drive, right? So we know what we want to get to, um, but you can't get to that point without taking care of the things that are right here in front of you, and that's where be where your feet are comes into play, right? Yeah, everybody has that end goal. Right. My end goal, my family is for my kids to be set. My daughters to have a very good idea of who they are and where they want to go and what they want to be. But in order to do that. Right. I have to be present in my daughter's lives every single day, every moment that I have with them. And that's kind of what gets lost in the process. Um, but that's the, what I tell my kids, man. Um, this is your football team. You guys are driving the ship. I'm just here to give you a sense of direction. Right. Even my stories. Right. I always go, hey, this is what worked for me. Right. This is how I got to this is what I did to get to X, Y, and B. Right. You guys, X, Y, and Z, you guys have to take what you want from me. Right. Put it how you want to put it and then use it however best it is that you guys want to use it. That doesn't mean do it exactly like me. I'm not the end all be all. Right. What I do and how what I say is not the end all be all. I just know that this is work for me. So that's kind of the message that I give these kids, man. And when I start seeing and I'll give you a perfect example. We have a kid that we started playing, right? This is his first year playing. He's a junior. He's about 6'5", 280, right? He's been a baseball player. And I had a conversation with him in this offseason. He was like, ah, I really don't know. First day of camp, he says, you know what? I'm going to give this a try. And then you see him getting better each and every day, right? You see him getting better each and every day. And then it goes from I'm going to give this a try to – I don't know why I never played this before. <laughs> and then it goes from, I don't know why I never played this before to coach. How can I continue to play this? And then it's like, coach, I want to play this thing in college. So that's what I'm here for, man. And, and that's all the difference that it makes. And you get this long email from his parents saying about how much he really enjoys it and how much they haven't seen him smile this, this much in so long. And I mean, that's all the validation that I need, man, that I'm doing things the right way and that these kids are, really taking in what we're preaching and applying it and, 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 and clearly they're getting better and, and they're feeling it. And, um, and, and that's why you go out there and, and you win football games too. So, um, you know, that, that's, that's kind of my message, man. That, hey, we're going to give you guys the tools, but Hey, I want you guys to paint the picture. I want you guys to drive the shit. This is real meaningful work. Like that's awesome. And you know, when we would do camps with kids and things like that, you know, you got the kids that come in and, you know, they're kind of looking around and then you get a couple of drills into it and they start to loosen up and have a little yeah. more fun. And then by the end of it, they don't want to go home. Right. Exactly. So exactly. like, that's really, really cool. And you can see that now in your position, not just on the field, but you can kind of see that in life, right. Mm -hmm. Cause you got them for some of them for four full years. So you get to see that, that full impact. So with it being so rewarding, is this something that you think you would do 
um, forever, no matter what? Or do you think if an opportunity came up down the line, maybe you would move up? Or is like, is this what just what you want to do? You know, right now, I'm so happy where I'm at, um, so content where I'm at. And, um, you know, with a growing up without a father, right? Um, you know, the I, I know the time that goes into coaching college and, 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 and pro football. Right. And I respect those guys, but I'm so blessed and I'm in a really good spot right now. And um, the most importantly, I, I need to be there for my kids. And yeah. I feel like being able to do this, coaching in high school and being able to go home and see my kids and, you know, waking up with them and putting them to bed and all that other stuff. I don't want to miss that stuff. So yeah. uh, I'm, I'm so content right now. That's awesome. Um, and you touched a little bit about, you know, how you talk to them and getting prepared and game readiness and things like that. And what worked for you may not work for them. Just take pieces of it. With this week being uh, opening week at Mizzou, tell us a little bit about what worked for you leading up to the game. Your first game, first prep. What was your first what was your preparation like leading up that first week and then contrast it with coaching and what it's like now preparing as a coach? For us, man, our squad, you know, what got me ready was practice, like actually physically practicing because I was surrounded by so many great players. And there was a time that our two defense was just as good as our number one defense. <laughs> so, like – it was the competitiveness and practice that prepared me for the games. Yeah. And, and I didn't have to have, like, you know, for me, there, I, I'm not a superstitious guy, so I don't have to listen to a certain song before I go. I, I don't have to do this. I know that walking into the stadium every Saturday, I was prepared because of what we did in practice. Yeah, I think everybody knows about Jeremy Macklin that when he walks into the stadium, he's ready to go. Yeah. It, it and, don't matter. Every day. And, every and, day. and being around T, U, Tommy, Will, uh chase the running back like it was like i had to bring it every day in practice because that that's what we had right <laughs> da right jared perry like we, we were loaded so for me that's what got me ready for the game so that is what i'm trying to do here at kirkwood like my practices i take care of my guys but we get after it yeah. we get after it because i want them to understand that hey it's so hard in practice that when you get out there on Friday nights and this week is Thursday, right? Coach, this is kind of easy. Well, that's because you bust your butt all, all week in practice. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of my, you know, kind of what I take to it. Like I said, I take care of my guys, man. And, you know, we have ice cream trucks and we have smoothies and we do stuff <laughs> like that. But we work, man. And, and I'm really happy with, um, you know, the way that the kids have responded. And, you know, some of the kids say, Coach, I love Coach Mack, but he kind of strict. Well, that's because, you know, I know how hard it is to win. I know how hard it is to get to that next level. I know how hard it is just to navigate through life, right? So, of course, I'm going to be strict because when you're working a job, right, and you show up late, there's consequences. Yeah. If you show up late too many times, they're going to out of there. Yeah. They're going to fire you. So, I'm strict from that standpoint, but the kids love it, man. They respond to it very well. So. Yeah. Yeah. Um... Man, I got a J Max story about the competitiveness of practice. <laughs> I'm going into your red shirt year. You know, I'm number one punt returner, okay? <laughs> and I know they're going to try to move Jeremy Macklin, the great <laughs> Jeremy Macklin in front of me, okay? I know it. I know it. So I said, January, riding my goals out, said, nobody's going to see me drop a punt. They're not. It's not going to happen. Not in Rangers, not in special teams. They're never going to see me drop a punt. I'm going to get at least 15 yards every time, and they can't take my spot if I'm getting 15 and catching every punt. So two days come, haven't dropped a punt, <laughs> haven't dropped a punt in eight months. Not a punt. Nobody's seen it. Okay, my grandpa had cancer at the time. So during two days, I don't know if you know this, I was driving back to Kansas City after practice, uh, stay at the a hospital, wake up at 4:30, go to practice, leave at nine, go to the hospital stay with him do that I did it for a week straight and uh that thursday morning i passed out at breakfast okay passed out at breakfast i missed the morning practice I remember that i remember it <laughs> and i come back to the second practice in the afternoon jerry macklin number one on depth chart i was like i was so heated okay i'm so heated 
Then Illinois comes. The first punt return, I'm still mad. I'm still salty. <laughs> and you take it 90, 90 yards, 78 yards to the house for a touchdown. I was like, oh, okay, I guess. He's <laughs> <laughs> I, hey, you know, what's you so, know what? What's so crazy, though, Tommy, and this, and this is where we pushed each other because – I don't think I dropped the punt that camp either. So like it's like, yeah. but like that's that's what it comes from though, and that's and like I said, that's the atmosphere that you want. Like you just want everybody to push each other. Like it, it, it was and like you did to get a ball, right? Am I wrong? But right, and that you did it right. It was you so didn't drop a punt at all. But it was so happy, like seeing T. Rupp make a play or seeing Kaufman or you guys make like it was so happy. Because you know how hard it is, and you know how much we, how much hard work we put in as a group, as a unit. You know what I mean? Like there was days, yeah. there was days at practice where, I mean, we, we just roll over the defense because that's how that's how good we were as a group. And yep. I think we developed that. Yeah, we all individually were good, but as a group, we're damn near unstoppable. I tell you what, man. Like, so you know, we was built like a bunch of two and three star cats, and. So it was like, all right, cool. You know, J-Mac, all right, oh, he done towards ACL. All right, here we go. Same old Mizzou. First punt return. Cat takes it to the house. I said, <laughs> you know, you're talking about all this talent that's around there. We're like, I remember watching you take that punt to the house and seeing those points go up on the board. And I was like, dang, this dude really is good. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> I was like, he is good. I said, like, wait, we don't have to go back on offense? We don't have to go out? I was like, dang, oh, this, good. this just man. made my job so much easier. I'm like, yeah, oh man. my gosh, where has he been this whole time? And it was like that in that moment, it was seeing all the hard work that Cats put in before trying to get elite talent like yourself to Mizzou. Yeah. And I was just so happy that it had paid off because <laughs> it was awesome, man. And we had such a good team that it just made it a lot of fun. And you touched on it with the competitiveness, but just going down that roster – it made it so fun because nobody was selfish. Nobody. Everybody was. loved to see the other person succeed. All we wanted to do was get the ball and ram it down their throat, score a touchdown first, and then just distribute the ball all over the place and watch everybody eat. That's it. <laughs> I, I, I honestly, I don't think there was ever an episode where somebody was mad because they weren't getting the football. Not one. I don't think nope. there was ever an episode. Because I know that I know what's going to happen. I know you guys are going to stop playing like after the second you know, series of the third quarter, <laughs> and I'm going to get at least six catches between then and the middle of the fourth, 100%. I'm going to be the, I'm going to be the cat out there like, oh, smash, I'll bet, smash, I'll bet. I'm going to have six catches for 78 yards and be straight. I just got to stay focused the whole game. <laughs> but, man, another story, j Max story. This is when I – this I knew, like, how, like, fast you were, okay? We do build-ups in the summer, and – like everybody was pretty much right up at the top, right? I would start off running full speed and only be a couple yards back, and you guys would be jogging at first, okay? But you caught you caught a um, a. Screen. Hey, hold on, Tommy. Just so everybody knows that that is actually true. I yeah, wrote your forty a- time up here on the board. It says Tommy Saunders forty time four seven one. Hey, I'll take that all day. <laughs> hey, hey, hey! You play four seven one every play. Every play. <laughs> I can't, bro. Every conditioning test we ever did, I ran full speed. I'm running four seven ones on cross fields, on one tens, on everything. Or I'm not making the time. It just, it is. But I remember this. We're running a screen, and so as soon as the ball snaps, I take off sprinting for the safety. Okay, I know J Mac's gonna catch it, and he's gonna take off. I go get the safety, and so by the time J Mac, you catch the ball. All right. And I'm already running full speed up field, and you're even with me, okay? <laughs> you're even with me, and you're, like, standing still catching the ball, okay, facing the sideline. I'm running full speed the other way. You take one step up field in our full speed. Huh, like, the first step, you're full speed, and then you dust everybody to the house. It was the most <laughs> insane thing I've ever seen. I was like, oh, this cat is – I said, you're, he's different. You know what I mean? And I, every time you play a game with – with people and these special people, they do something that's just like incredible. And it's just like, I was like, oh my God. And that's like, the, that's the story I always tell about. I was like, no, he's, he's fast for real. And one step, full speed. My, my very first workout, right? So I get up there. So when I came up there, I didn't go to school, summer school, like a lot of freshmen did. Yeah. 
you know me, I'm trying, I'm, 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 I'm trying to play, right? So yep. <laughs> I'll never forget. Very first workout, we get on the field, we got PTs, right? Mm. All I heard was, and this was Will. So Will's my guy, St. Louis guy. Will's like, he said, well, listen, whatever you do, don't keep up with J. Ray and Tommy. <laughs> I'm like, what? what? What you talking about? I'm gonna keep up with J. Ray and Tommy. So the first one, right? I'm with him, right? For, for those who don't know what a PT is, it's all the way around. It's like basically a 400, but on the football field. Yep. That's basically what it is. So I'm like, all right, cool. He said, Matt, I'm telling you, man, whatever you do, do not try to keep up with Tommy and, and, and Jay Ray. <laughs> I'm like, all right, man, whatever. So we running, right? First one go. I'm 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 out, right? I finished like with Tommy and Jay Ray. We all finished all three of us. Okay. The second, we run five of them. The second Oof. one, I'm out, right? First of all, Jay Ray and Tommy take off full speed. <laughs> I have to. I'm not gonna make the time. Yeah, they take off. Full speed. So the second one, I'm keeping up with him, right? So I finished probably like a step behind him. Here comes the third one. They take off full speed again. <laughs> All right, hear me. I, I'm a freshman. I'm trying to keep up. Uh, I fall back to about the middle of the pack, right? The middle of the pack. The fourth one, I finished last. The fifth one, I finished dead last. I was like, no, I'm never going to try to keep up with them again from PTs, man. It was the most... Him and J-Ray took off so fast and like it was like it was like no thinking behind it. They just they just go and everybody else is like taking their stride and everything. You had so to I, know, I, man. I yeah. Them boys were so slow, they had to sprint the whole thing. Yo, you, you don't know. See, listen, listen, I know you ran a, a 4-3-1 at the combine. I understand. But you don't know what it's like to have to run 4-7 every man. step, every single time. Mm. Like you could just turn it on anytime you want. Nah, I don't. It's gonna take me at least seven steps. To... I, learned, I learned how to run <laughs> PTs that day. <laughs> how to run PTs that day. Oh, that's yeah. too funny. But that, I mean, honestly, like the, you know, that's so true about you. Like you always want to get on the field. You hurt your knee by in practice trying. You didn't have to. You was extra. It was after. Yeah. You know, um, seven on seven, running one on ones, talking stuff with people. You know, being being competitive. You know, that's how you know um, you had that setback in the beginning, and you know, you did you just took it in stride, and you kept working and kept moving. You know, yeah. I mean, I think that's that's what's great about you, and you can see that through your career. Talk yeah. about that a little bit, J Mac. Where do you think you got that from? Because I remember when I came to Philly, uh, I was it was my second year in the league, so it was your rookie year, and I remember getting there. And seeing the comp same competitiveness in you from the zoo as a rookie in the NFL in the top leagues, like where do you think that comes from? I think it comes from my upbringing, man. Just yeah. understanding, you know, how tough it was and how not ideal it was, mm -hmm. um, and just always remembering that feeling, right? Um, and you know, back against the wall a lot, and. Um, you know, I just wanted to prove that I belong. Um, and that's kind of always been it. And um, I know for a fact that I have a lot more fun playing the game than I do standing on the sideline. So <laughs> that's also a mentality that I have, you know. But I think it comes from my upbringing, man. And I think that's why and, – and going back to these kids, man, a lot of these kids walk the same streets that I walk, right? Some of them live in the same exact house I grew up in. Mm -hmm. So – that relationship runs deep. And I think even from starters, right, the kids already know, okay, hey, Coach Macklin came from here. Um, if I do things the right way, right, if I stay out of trouble, um, if I just work hard, right, yeah. work hard, um, you know, ask for help. You know, one of the things that I tell my kids is, you know, especially nowadays, right, when a kid asks for help sometimes it may get looked it may be frowned upon uh, you know they don't want to do it because they're embarrassed um but in reality it's the exact opposite if a kid's coming to me asking me for help about something with something or having me explain something else to them um for me it's telling me that they really care right they're really trying to get it right um you know they're trying to understand what's going on um and, and they just needed some extra explanation and, and that's not a bad thing i had so many people along the way help me you know what I mean? I wouldn't, 
wouldn't be where I am today without the people that helped me. So uh, that's also another thing that I do, man. But to go back to the question, I think it's just where I come from, man. Um, you know, you just sometimes, you know, the hand that you're dealt's not the greatest. And, um, you know, I'm always determined to figure out how to play the best, though. So. Yeah, I think it says a lot about uh, you and your mindset. You know, just just when you said earlier, when you talked about not growing up with a father and then it's clear that you, that being a great father is um, a very uh, big value in your life. Yeah. You know, the fact that to notice those things like, hey, this wasn't ideal. This is what this this was my circumstances, but I'm not going to let that determine my future. I'm not going to let that, you know, take me down a path that everybody expects me to go down. I'm going to step back and have enough awareness to do the right thing and know what the right thing is. And if I don't know, I'm going to go and ask and seek help. Cause I remember you always would come up, you would come up to me, you would come up to the older cats and ask routes how to run this and how to do this. There was, there was no ego in, in, uh, in you, you know, you were, you always wanted to get better. And I think that's, that's something that it, it, it sounds like you're teaching the players of that. Just, you're not, the, I've only met one gamer in my entire life, and that's Tony Temple. Tony Temple is the only gamer that I've ever met. Everybody else has to work. And yeah. don't think you can't, you can't that you're going to not work out in the weight room and then go perform on the field. Don't think that you're, like you said, not go to meetings on time and show up on time, and then all of a sudden you're going to get a job and you're going to show up on time. You're, that, you're the same person. You're the same person today. You're making the same decisions. That's gonna, you know, lead to uh, your future and where you wanna wanna go. Um, you know, so I think that's incredible what you're doing, man. Uh, like truly uh, pouring back into the kids and changing the trajectory of these kids, man, is is something that is uh, very impressive. And um, man, looking up to you for doing that, man, because that that's a lot. I know it's hard work uh, for sure, um, but man, just. Congratulations on that, and that's that's incredible, man. I'm proud thank of you, bro, for real. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Hey, before we let you get up out of here, though. Talk to me. Who is the best athlete you've ever played with at Mizzou and in the pros? The best athlete. Ooh. Yo, you can say the top hooper, too, because, like, I'm right here. Well, we already know I'm here. So, like, it if I'm literally like, sitting right here. I'm literally sitting right here. <laughs> Stop it. We, we only won rec league because of me. Remember that. You you tried to carry him by yourself, but you couldn't. When I came, it put us over the top. So remember that. You were a ball hog and a jack. <laughs> I scored 50 a game at rec hey, league. You're not wrong, bro. I'm he is 50. a ball hog. Absolutely. 50 shots a game, man. <laughs> hey, Tommy, hey, Tommy wouldn't pass the ball for nothing. I used to just oh, run back in the game. I'm – I'm going to make the shot. The goal yeah. of basketball is to score the basketball. And the, as I look at the court and I see J Mac and I see D Wash and Ruck and Denario. Hey, man, we're going to lose and I look and see if you keep talking me, like this, man. Or me, <laughs> like, I'm on, clearly man. most qualified All to give up it. Hey, so listen, <laughs> the best athlete that I've seen, like, so there's a difference between being an athlete and being athletic. Okay. okay. I agree. Yes. I agree. Yes. Now, I think this guy may go for both of these in the league is Tyreek Hill. He's the fastest human being I've ever seen on the football field. Yeah. Um, he's five eight five nine. can win those dunk, yeah. uh, can do a lot of things. He's strong as an ox, mm -hmm. um, can play basketball. Um, he is probably the best athlete or most athletic person I've seen in the pros. Yeah. Okay. Now, when you talk about athlete in college, um, I mean, D.A. Denario probably could have gone pro in baseball. Thank you. Right. Tommy is pretty athletic. Right. Tommy used to give people 40 on the basketball court. Um, he's good at all these random stuff like croquet and, <laughs> and, 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 and pickleball. Like Tommy's like, <laughs> he's just good at random stuff. Bowling. Like he's just good at really random stuff. You know what I mean? Um, uh, pickleball. Uh, I, I want to say just athlete though. Like 
I'm not going to include myself. I think D.A. might be it. Absolutely. That man can throw a baseball a mile. He can hit a baseball a mile. He could jump. What, he had a 41-inch vert. He can't shoot the ball for anything, though. (laughs) He he might have the worst jump shot I've ever seen. But he'll dunk on you from the three-point line. Exactly. (laughs) Yo, I'll – I'll never forget. I was in the weight room trying to max for my vertical. I was trying to uh, get 34 on my on the vert pad. Okay, so I'm jumping and I've jumped like a thousand times, right? And Denario walks in the weight room. Walks in the weight room. He gets on the vert pad. He does a backflip, lands it on the vert pad, and it was 38. And I was like, <laughs> I said, I'll have a chance. <laughs> like, I'm, you know, if I'm competing on vertical jump, uh, these cats, like, it's not a chance. I have to figure out something. I got to figure out something else. Because Denario is a freak, dude. He's incredible. He, people don't realize how good he was as a football player. And people also don't Yo. realize the athleticism that he had. I mean, yeah. it, it was – and to be six, what, four Three, and a half, six, five? five? Yeah. Right? Yo. Unheard of. Yeah. We was doing the uh the home run derby at your softball thing, and he was hitting softballs out the baseball stadium. That's what I'm saying. I'm done with this. <laughs> we, yeah, we, we went out before that and, and hit baseballs. He was knocking them things into the to the complex and everything. I said, "Come on, man, what are you doing?" <laughs> oh, this is too much. <laughs> All Straight up, J Mac, man, we appreciate your time today. Yeah, man. Thank our sponsor, 360 Vodka. Uh, for helping us out with this podcast, man. And J Mac, is there anything else you want to say to anybody? No, man. Just uh, you know, good luck this weekend to University of Missouri. Uh, all the Mizzou fans, man, it's a great time. Football season, nothing better. All right, let's get off on the right foot. Absolutely. There you heard it. Appreciate you, J Mac, man. We'll all talk right, to you later on down the road. All right, Check out, boys, later, bro. Yeah. Later.